Welcome back, this is Dr. Jin Sung, and today we're going to continue on that journey of Hashimoto's thyroiditis and autoimmune reactivity to the cerebellum, or basically your brain. We're going to look at signs and symptoms and examination findings for cerebellar dysfunction. So when we have a patient who comes in and has Hashimoto's thyroiditis and they have positive antibodies, TPO, TGV antibodies, then we need to look at patients and say, is their, is their cerebellum healthy, right? Do they have issues, signs and symptoms of secondary autoimmunity to the cerebellum, right? So when a patient comes in, we look at the clinical signs. We have questions and we say, do you have poor balance and stability, right? Are we a little bit off balance? When the light is off and, uh, at night and you go to the bathroom, do you trip into things? Do you uh, bump into the wall, right? Or do you hit your hand on the corner? So we have poor balance and stability. Secondarily, we look at vertigo, or basically dizziness, right? There's different forms of dizziness, but cerebellum problems can also create uh, ataxia or dizziness. Anxiety induced with crowded places. Now, this is something that people don't realize is that when you have cerebellar issues, and let's say you go to a busy supermarket, you have a lot of visual input from the aisles and products and people walking around, right? All this visual input will throw off the cerebellum because the visual input along with the head movement, with the um, different canals or cochlea, it integrates into the cerebellum and the cerebellum will tell you, oh, I don't like this place. It's kind of too much for me. So we look at anxiety as a result, okay? Nausea with movement, right? Certain movements will create nausea, especially things like car sickness. This up and down movement of the car, stopping and going. We're looking at different canal issues that integrate into the cerebellum, as well as utricles and, and saccules, right? So we're looking at movement, and we're also looking at sickness when you're in the car, and sound and light sensitivity. So if you have all of these issues, right, you may not even realize that you have a cerebellar issue. And we need to clinically examine the patient to see, do they have a cerebellar problem, right? Are these all related to that? Or do they just have a dizziness issue, right? Maybe they have a peripheral vestibular disorder where it's the, the eardrum or a fistula or um, canal or orticonia or something in the ear, right? So we have an examination, right? When the patient comes in and if they write something and they have something called macrographia, because patients who have cerebellar issues have problems with fine motor movements, small fine movements. The handwriting becomes very big. So you so can see it, you can just huge letters, right? So you have macrographia. And then you also have a positive Romberg's. So positive Romberg's in our office is basically putting your feet together, stand there, and can you balance, right? If you want to stress the cerebellum even further, what you can do is you can do tandem Romberg's. You put one foot in front of the other and stand there. Can you do it? Or do you feel dizzy or wobbly front and back? If you close your eyes in a tandem position, this is a good one to do. So do it at home. Stand there with your feet together, and just stand there. Can you balance? Can you balance with your feet together with your eyes closed? Are you swaying all over the place? That can be an indication of a cerebellum issue. Then you can stress the patient and say, let's put one foot in front of the other. It's called a tandem Romberg. And then stand there. Can you do that? Right? Or can you walk heel to toe? Right? And then if you close your eyes with your feet let's say one foot in front of the other, and you're falling over all over the place, it's an integration issue with the cerebellum. Another thing is ataxia. When you have a patient come in, we have them walk. How are they walking? So when they come in and they have ataxia, they will tend to walk with their feet a little bit wider, the toes pointed out, and they tend to kind of swing their arm. They have hypotonia, or like the arms look like noodles, right? and then they're walking. And then when they stand there, they'll stand with a wide stand gait, meaning they'll have their feet wide apart so they can get balanced. And they have good balance when their feet are apart. 
So what we do is we stress them by putting them in a Romberg position, putting their uh, gait into a small, narrow space. So you have Y stands gait, ataxia. Another one to do is called this kinesia. So basically you're able to alternate your movements in a rapid pace. So you can do that at home. Can you do this without missteps or, or in coordination, right? Or you can take your hand and go like this and go fast. Can you do that movement? Can you do this movement, right? It's a rapid alternating movement. Are you able to do that? Because the cerebellum basically coordinates the on and off movement of this. Another one is terminal tremor. This is a good one to do. If you have a patient stand there with your feet together, they touch your nose, and then have them reach out and touch an object or a finger. Oftentimes with people who have cerebellar issues will do this. They'll touch their nose and they'll come and as they reach out, they will start to shake. It's called the terminal tremor. When you're trying to fine tune a movement further away from your body, your body, your cerebellum is stressed. So they may have this tremor or they, as they come to their nose, they might have a tremor. Right? Or they may even have a head-shaped tremor, right? Because the cerebellum is coordinating the fine motor movements. So when we have a patient, we want to look at, do they have big handwriting? Do you have positive Rombergs where you have your feet together, right? Can we stand in a narrow gait? Ataxia, when you're walking, broad-based gait, or they're kind of falling over. Or when you do a heel-toe walk, patient is leaning all over the place. This dyadical kinesia, can you do alternating movements rapidly? Terminal tremor, is my hand shaking or not, right? Or you can even do it with your feet, right? If you try to move your foot and target something, and your foot will shake. And then the Y stands gate. These are all signs of cerebellar disease. Try it yourself, and if, you'll be pretty surprised if you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis, I often find things like terminal tremor, dysdiotical kinesia, positive rhombergs, macrographia. We will find these signs. And if we find these signs, we can run antibody testing to see if we have an autoimmune process going on in the cerebellum. So it's all connected. Hashimoto's thyroiditis, balance issues, cerebellar issues, gluten ataxia, right? These are all interrelated things, okay? If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe and share, and we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.